and we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Diego. This is D Spot coming at you this afternoon on SB Nation's award winning Barça Blaugranes platform for all your Barça news and La Liga related action. Get it right here. This is the source, so look no further. We are here today to discuss and take your questions about anything Spanish football and Barça related. And without any further ado, got a little surprise for you. So let me know your feedback on the following. Uh, this is going to be a test. So also bear with me as I uh, am using a new software, which I'm very excited about. And um, I want to show you this intro video once I get my hand on it. In the meantime, however, do like Arizinha that is dropping his comments in the comment section below. I will answer them um, accordingly. And here we go. Here is the intro to D Spot on Barça Blaugranes. Enjoy. Cause I'm blowing up the spot, the spot, the spot. Blowing up the spot and all that. All this paper, son. If you haven't already, as I'm back, what did you think of that? Quick little improvised intro. Some of you guys will know it from my previous um, intro that I used to do on Barca, on D-Spot, I should say. Um, I'm still adapting, adding things to it, but I'm really excited to do, to use this new, um, use this new software. Ecamm Live Demo is allowing me to go live on Facebook and incorporate different elements. I can even write on the screen, uh, let me try to test that out a little bit. Huh? Look at this. I'm going to write a little something to you guys. Visca al Barça. Add that. Bam! Visca al Barça, in case you didn't know. So, as you can see, I'm excited. I want to use these things. Let me know your thoughts on this new software as well. See if it's worth investing a penny or two into. As I see... Uh, Uwashina saying, please let's, let me know the status on Deolofeo. I will get to all that. However, I quickly wanted to make a reference and a comment to the weekend action, of course. Betis Barça, what the hell happened? What did Messi eat before the match? It was unbelievable, guys. It was unbelievable. You saw that I tried to incorporate that little, mm, moment of brilliance, that sheer and utter uh, unique, I mean, the words fail me to describe Messi at this point. What hasn't been said already about this little football, footballing genius, in my opinion, the best player to have ever graced this planet by far. What happened when he went all the way back to recuperate the ball in his own half? Saw that, I think it was uh, Vermalen or Umtiti that was in trouble. Got the ball passed to him. And from there on, it was just sheer magic. My days. Uh, the Betis players were all over the place except for on the ball, which was stuck to his feet like glue. Amazing. The little cañito at the end and sending the, the rest of the players off on their way. I mean, everything has been said, of course, already about this match. And I wanted to review it with you guys uh, and just basically go over the latest news. I see Salif in the comments asking about Coutinho. When is he going to start? Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Uwashina, Uwashina, uh, your question about Deolofeo. So, um, I want to dedicate as well. I wanted to just make this clear. I wanted to, seeing as it's kind of an improvised, um, broadcast in terms of the software that I'm using. It's it's throwing me a little bit off because I see stats that keep popping up and little things. Um, but don't let my disorganized <laughs> broadcast uh, 
throw you off. Keep submitting your comments because I see those coming in nice and neatly on the side. Uh, so basically what I want to do is just dedicate this broadcast to you guys. Go over the news. Go over your questions because, you know, the weekend action has been discussed at length, at full over the Barça Blaugranes uh, um, platform, of course, in the various articles. A game to para enmarcar a, a, a match to uh, 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 um, uh, como se dice esto en inglés enmarcar no sé como se dice when you put a painting with uh, a match to frame okay <laughs> a match to frame no sé si se traduce I don't know if it translates it is what it is okay teaching you Spanish while talking about Barça está bien a mí me parece bien by the way check this out how's this for merch I like this little sweater, my favorite Barça merch, I would say, because it's it's subtle. It's got a little FCB right there, and then it's got Yogesh. In case you were wondering, el escudo, the logo right on the on the sleeve, and it's got a little something on the back too, I think. I don't know if this is available anymore. Mil with sense nurenta now. Nation club cap portal core. Blaugrana son els colors. Fútbol club Barcelona, guys. Um, in any case, Deulo fail news. Let's go over. Let me try this out, okay? I'm going to try this out. Uh, as I said, going to be a little bit all over the place, but bam. Going to share your screen with me. And look at that. You can see exactly where what I'm looking at. And I was thinking it's kind of cool to go over the Twitter page and answer your questions as we scroll down the feed. So I saw um, uh, Salif uh, Jalau asking about when Coutinho will start. Um, and in my, uh, or it, 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 what I had heard is that Coutinho will start against Espanyol. He has everything. Uh, all, all green signs, all uh, green lights show that he will start against Espanyol, his old club. Here we see Coutinho could make his debut against uh, his old club, Espanyol. An excellent article written by none other than Luis Mazar uh, Mazarie Mazariegos, uh, one of our old school Barça Blaugranes cats. The, the man, the man that tweets during the matches, some of the funniest shit you will read on Twitter during matches. So make sure you read those tweets when it's game time. Um, and he wrote here an excellent article about Felipe Coutinho and his chances to start against, um, Real Club Deportivo de Español. Of course, those of you who don't know his old club, he used to play for Espanol before going over to uh, Liverpool. And uh, he, of course, therefore knows what it's like to live in Barcelona. No surprise, therefore, that he wanted to return to the city where he once lived in. Was very happy uh, during his stay at Espanol. Didn't really impress very much. I mean, enough for Liverpool to pick him up, of course. But um, during his time in Espanol, didn't really um, shine as much as he, of course, did during his time over in Liverpool. But um, nonetheless, a little bit of news for you guys, in case you didn't know. Let's see as well if Andres Iniesta and Mascherano will be healthy. Uh, that will be, of course... Most likely, Masche's last game, El Jefecito, uh, looks like he will be packing his bags and leaving, definitively. Uh, as we see here, Javier Mascherano to officially bid farewell to the fans before the Espanol match. Um, in case you guys didn't check that out, check that out on Twitter. Another article written by our very own Luis Mazariegos. Follow him, follow him at, uh, Luis M8989, uh, for his personal tweets as well. But Luis very well pointing out that this is most likely his final match, guys. This could be it. At least his final match in the Camp Nou. So, uh, it is my hope that we 
Los Cules bid him the farewell that he deserves. I will miss him truly, tremendously. He's been an excellent player, un, un referente, just a, a, a referent player, reference for players coming up, uh, in my opinion. El Jefecito looking a little bit on the heavy side in this picture, uh, but that takes nothing away from his achievements at the club. An example, in my opinion, um, you know, so polyvalente, able to play in many different positions and um, played in that midfield, played in as center back even. You remember when Luis Enrique started playing him as center back? Or was it even Guardiola? I don't even remember, but uh, Jefecito just... Oh, un salud. Un saludo, uh, maximum respects over here from the spot. And I've, I'm, I'm sure all of you guys, the rest of you cooles will, you know, share my opinion in, uh, you know, just giving him, bidding him farewell and, 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 and being very appreciative of everything that he has achieved at the club. Uh, all of his sacrifices, uh, that he's made and, and when it comes to playing time and everything, just, uh, a legend. An absolute legend. Um, so in terms of Deulofeo, sorry, uh, Owachina, Deulofeo, it seems that him and Napoli are in discussion. Napoli, um, as I'm just scrolling down the, uh, Bla Barça Blaugrana's Twitter feed to see if there's been an article written about that. I'm not entirely sure, but what I do know is that Napoli not entirely committed right now to pay his uh, release clause so there's negotiations going on over there. Uh, it could very well be that those close before the weekend. Uh, of course, Deolofeo knows that his playing minutes are hugely, heavily limited uh, at the club. He's been, in my opinion, given the chances. We can argue whether he took advantage of those chances enough. Maybe more continuation would have allowed him to have been progressing at a quicker rate who knows uh i think for in his case however at this point is the best if he does seek to get extra playing minutes uh at another team and napoli in that sense no better team that would fit his playing style of course napoli a squad that hugely is or was influenced by the way that Pep guardiola played during his time at football club barcelona so i wish him the best uh, and I hope that it gets done sooner rather than later because there's an overbooking at our, at our uh, team right now, guys. We have 26 players in the squad. We all know that Valverde likes to have a very tight squad. He once saying even he would like to have 22 players, uh, if not 24, but 22 is his preferred number. So, you know, we gotta get rid of players, guys. Right now we're still four players over. Uh, that said, of course, Rafinha. And let me pull this up. Rafinha, yesterday, his loan became official to, uh, to Inter de Milan. Um, him sending a very, uh, emotivo mensaje, very emotional farewell message, excuse me, uh, to the Barca fans as he also bid his farewell, said his goodbyes. And, um, here we see. It's official. Rafinha leaves Barcelona to Inter de Milan. <coughs> um, Jill Clark here, our site manager, giving the breaking news, the info. Um, confirming the loan. Also confirming that it is a loan. Not, uh, he has not been sold. Inter de Milan is holding out on paying the 35 million plus 3 million in variables. They prefer to wait six months, see how he adapts to El Calcio, to Italian football, and then pick up, uh, um, pick up or not the buyout clause of 35 million plus the 3 million in variables over the summer. Let's see how that works out. I hope for Rafinha that he, you know, is able to make this best at the time. In my opinion, Barca has not been able to take full advantage of the, uh, 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 uh both Thiago and Rafinha, um, of, of the two brothers. I wanted him to stay. I think he had a lot more to give. And unfortunately, you know, it's not the case, but what can you do? What can you do? Players, uh, the squad is only so big. There's only so many minutes in a game, so many matches 
to be played. And in the end, it's uh, our manager, Balberde, to, who decides. And in Balberde, we trust. Make no mistake about that. Um, to some more of your questions. Wachina uh, saying, Messi is undoubtedly inhuman, an attacking midfielder who fights for the golden boot with central strikers since over a decade. Yeah, man, absolutely. Lilo saying, what do you think about the second leg against Espanyol? What are our chances? I think our chances are good. I don't think that Espanyol is able to hold out another 90 minutes without receiving a goal. I know that a lot of you guys on these spots, as well as Barça Blaugranas here, were worried or are worried, saying, you know, they're going to park the bus, they're going to build a wall, build a wall. They're going to grow. They're going to go Trump style on us. Um, but that wall is going to get broken down. I cannot see them hold out another 90 minutes. The, the, it, for those who has who have never been to to the Camp Nou, Camp Nou is a very big not only stadium but the pitch is very big. It's very wide. Rarely does Espanol come here and not concede one goal at least. Uh, let alone when you know our players are just in in tip top shape and tip top motivation. The level couldn't be any higher. Messi just. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, dim reaching dimensions that we have, you know, I, I can never get sick of seeing Messi at playing at this level. So I think our chances are more than good to go through to the next round. I have absolute faith in this squad, faith in, faith in Valverde, uh, faith in Andre Gomez even to, uh, you know, push us through to the, to the next round. Um, you know, Luis Suarez is bang up on form again, banging in those goals. How many goals is it now? I mean, he's been scoring in seven, eight consecutive matches. I think it's 10 or 11 goals in this past seven, eight matches. Uh, for all those doubters out there, shh, let me, shh, let me go closer to the mic. Shh. For all of you, those who's told me, Diego, he's done with, it's over. Shh. No, sir. No, it's not. Luis Suarez is back in the form and never at a better time. This uh, second half of the season is now kicked off officially. Uh, no campeones de invierno, by the way. Interesting, that. Hey, where was the campeón de invierno? Hmm. Last year, Madrid campeón de invierno was celebrated all around the nation. This year, no campeón de invierno. It's all good. We don't need campeón de invierno. Especially not when you're 11 points clear over the second place Atlético de Madrid. 11, guys. Oh, my goodness. This is done and dusted with. La Liga is done and dusted with. We can focus our efforts on the Copa del Rey and Champions League because our cushion is just oh so comfy in La Liga. Um... Uh, uh, Covina saying, when is Coutinho and Yerry Mina going to play? So Coutinho, like I said, probably, uh, according to our Luis, uh, has chances to play against Espanol this upcoming Thursday. Thursday, right? Thursday. Uh, and Yerry Mina, I think as well. Uh, I think he has chances to play. Bermalen, of course, now injured, uh, for two weeks. So Yerry Mina will be on that bench and will highly likely play. Salif is saying, I'm very proud of you, bro. Salif. My man. Thank you very much for that little boost. Uh, Thank you for being proud. I'm proud of this channel too. Barça Blaugrana is growing exponentially as well as D-Spot. Uh, growing at a rate that is um, humbling. And uh, thank you guys for you know staying loyal, tuning in on a weekly basis. Whether it is here on Barça Blaugrana, whether it is on my personal YouTube channel, uh, uh, on, on D-Spot. Uh, you know, I love it. Thank you guys for the commitment and Salif, I'm proud of you too for, um, you know, keeping it for, for collaborating, for uh, tuning in and for uh, making these nice comments. Thank you so much. Bam. I can like it. Oh, look at that. Bam. I can like your comments in vivo on this software as well. Uh, uh, Raimov saying Coutinho went to Inter from Espanol, then to Liverpool. Did I say he went to Liverpool? Of course he went to Inter first. Uh, absolutely. And then went to Liverpool. Uh, excuse me if I made that mistake. Uh, also his time at Inter, however, was 
Mira, así, así. O sea, no hizo nada espectacular. In my opinion, didn't do much uh, anything spectacular. Uh, I was having a debate about that with my father-in-law, actually, who follows El Calcio. Um, of course, him living close to that Italian border uh, and Italian-speaking. Uh, he's a big city A fan, and uh, we were discussing his time at Inter de Milan, and he was saying, you know, Coutinho did nothing at Inter. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I said, well, you know, that probably has everything to do, uh, nothing to do with his skill level and everything to do with the fact that El Calcio does not suit uh, Brazilian players, especially not the Brazilian players, the likes of Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, you know, Romario, even Ronaldo, you know, fat Ronaldo, the real Ronaldo. I think at his time at Inter had nothing to do with his time in Barca. El Calcio is a, is a defensive-minded footballer that doesn't prize offensive create, creativity, in my opinion. So, uh, and, and we saw that when Coutinho went from Inter to uh, Liverpool, finally was in a league that, is, that was much more explosive, dynamic, uh, much more offensive-minded football, uh, physical in that sense, which, uh, and, and despite all that, he still managed to bang in goals as, a, as a, a midfielder. So I'm very, very excited and very curious to see, of course, what he can produce in a Spanish-style football that, 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 that prizes, that allows, you know, this creative flow of offensive-minded uh, offensive football uh, that, you know, I think is very much suited for Coutinho. Uh, thank you, uh, Ra Rahimo, for uh, pointing out that I uh, that I missed that his move to Inter. Of course, uh, it was Guardiola who started Masche in the center back. Right, I was uh, uh, on point on that one. Ash is saying, "Hey, bro, uh, you doing good out there?" My question: Arthur transfer rumor still going on. Is there any possibility uh, he's going to be here? And of course, what do you think about him as a Barca player? Does he possess Barca DNA? In my opinion, yes. Um, I, uh, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would like to see uh, Artur come to, to, to Barcelona. Those of you, your, you D-spot loyals, uh, will know that in the past I even, even favored his move to Barca over Coutinho for that matter. Um, I, from, I didn't know him much of him before when, you know, before these rumors started. Once I saw him, uh, posing or even wearing the Barca shirt, started to dig a lot into, uh, you know, his YouTube videos, even managed to catch a game or two. Um, also saw what he did over the Mundialito and I was like, you know what? I kind of like this guy. I would like him to come over. Of course, I know what that means for La Masia. Uh, it would be a blow to the players. The likes of Valenia um, and the other players that are down in the Barça be fighting for a place at that uh, for the first squad. Um, so, but I like what I see from him, and I hope that you know he does come. I think his price tag is reasonable, and uh, although and that probably went up a couple of mil when the Gremio Directivo saw him wearing a Barça shirt, but uh, let's see what happens. For now, those rumors have died down. I've even heard that Man United are interested now in buying him. So, uh, and Real Madrid for that matter. Um, Cobinho saying, the king of football, Messi, uh, Cheska saying, so Coutinho is 14. Coutinho is 14, guys. Yes. Uh, I thought he was going to wear number seven. <laughs> I was wrong. He's wearing 14. And everybody's saying that seven is being reserved for Antoine Griezmann. Yep. Antoine Griezmann. I don't know anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't. No me convence. Uh, it doesn't convince me Antoine Griezmann coming over to Barca. It's a lot of money. And uh, for me, it's like, I don't know if it's his motivation. I don't know what it is. Maybe if him at a good team, he'll light it up and he'll be that Antoine Griezmann of the last two seasons, but this season so far, besides that Chilena, I, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe Simeone sucks the energy out of his players, but uh, I'm not really seeing a Griezmann that I want on my squad this season. Not for 100 mil. Uh, also, read news about Barce uh, Barcelona and an uh, entourage discussing with Artur. Okay, so I addressed the Artur. Adrian Dragan, what's going on? What's going on, Adrian? 
Good to see you in this chat. Not gonna lie, that first half against Beth Betty's scared me. Second half was another story. So it's I don't know if you guys listen to the Churros y Tacticas podcast I recorded with Kian uh, of Managing Madrid yesterday. We had a great chat on our weekly podcast about this being a trend. You know what I mean? Like at this point, we see this happen. We saw this happen happen against uh, what was it? Real Sociedad. We saw this happen in the Wanda Metropolitano. We saw this happen in the Bernabeu against Madrid. Uh, we see this happen repeatedly at this point where 45 minutes, each 45 minute half tells a different story. You know, we have the first 45 minutes where you see Barca kind of feeling, feeling, you know, kind of getting like, mm, is this bed comfortable? Uh, is this, you know, do I want to lay on this side? Do I want to lay on that side? Do I want the pillow fluffy or do I just want to stretch it out and be flat in it <clears throat> do I want my feet under the under the um, the blanket or do I want my legs over the blanket I don't know let me just feel this out a little bit ah, ah, ah. and then the second half rolls around and they're like ah this is nice this is the spot this is the position let's go and then it starts raining goals you know what I mean I don't know if you like that analogy but um, I'm gonna <laughs> throw that one out there. That's kind of how I feel, you know, Barca is, 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 is approaching these matches because, um, you're right, uh, Adrian. To get back to your question, that first half scared me. The same that the first half scared me against a whole bunch of other teams like Real Madrid. Betis looked good. Betis had a lot of possession of the ball. At one point, they had 51% possession of the ball. Can you believe it? 51%. So, um, uh, yeah, that's, you know, not, nothing to, uh, we of course are all very familiar with Barca, uh, having long possessions of the ball, dominating the ball, uh, uh caressing that ball, enjoying, you know, 60, 70% possession of the ball. And that wasn't the case in those first 40, first 45 minutes, uh, where they basically said, okay, you want the ball? Take it. Have it. But as I managed, uh, as I mentioned on the podcast, what is very important, and I want to quote somebody, a less popular Kule, who in my opinion still deserves a whole bunch of respect, is that, uh, Luis Enrique said, you know, he was the first one to address the importance of l learning or knowing how to suffer. Uh, hay que sufrir un partido. Uh, sufrir es importante. Okay, um, saber sufrir es muy importante, and uh, bam, <laughs> and that is a lesson that this team is learning. Uh, they know how to suffer. They know how to absorb pressure, and uh, 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 basically mm, feel the game out, and then turn it up a gear in the second half. And once that first goal went in, you know, big ups to Rakitic, who had an absolute monstrous of a game as well against Betis. Uh, probably, you know, alongside Messi, the best player on the pitch that day. Um, uh, he scored the first goal, and it was just game over from then. Messi said, see ya! And then he went into uh, strat level, uh, strat stratospherical levels stratospheric levels, I don't know if that translate, but uh, he was lit, man, he was lit, to uh, quote uh, my, my man uh, Terence uh, Mumba, the man was lit, alright, Messi was lit, and he took over, so, um, it's, uh, it's a re recurring pattern, what we're seeing of this Barca side, and I expect uh, no different against, you know, big teams, the likes of Chelsea, who, you know, of course, have a wholly different approach. But uh, we're going to know, we're going to have to learn and know and be comfortable suffering, perhaps not even having possession of the ball. Maybe less so against Chelsea, but but certainly if we face Man City, you know, uh, uh, Guardiola side that will have a lot of possession of the ball. And it's important for us to understand how to read the game when we are, uh, are off the ball. And, and, and a lot of our players know how to do that. Andre Gomez is one that I want to highlight in that sense. Uh, Kobina saying, I'm proud of you, bro. Barcelona, my DNA. I'm proud of you too, my man. Um, Abraham is saying, good to see you, D. Good to see you too. An old school Barca Blaugranas and D-spot loyal. Joseph saying, what do you think of Yerry Mina? 
Uh, I think Yerimina has got a whole lot of potential. Um, my biggest doubt with these players that come straight from South America over to Europe, whether it's Spain, Italy, uh, you know, the Premier League, uh, France, Germany, Holland, whatever it might be, is you know how will they adapt? And in that sense, I think Yerimina decided. Uh, made a good decision is coming over to Spain. I think Holland would have been another good decision. And that is purely because of the style of football uh, that they play. I think Yerri Mina can be offensively a very interesting option as well. You know, he's a very, very tall guy. He's one of the tallest guys in La Liga. The tallest guy in our squad. I think he mide unos... Uh, un metro noventa y cinco, si no me equivoco. I think he... he met, uh, he, his height is 195, 196, so we got a big guy. This is a big guy, and in the air, <laughs> will be, you know, very dominant, very clinical uh, in his finishing. So, uh, a great threat in our, um, in the, in the, in the box, and of course as well when it comes to um, any, you know, strategic plays, you know, header rooming, corners, and, and fighting off strikers. So, I'm, I'm very excited to see him, him, and of course. His uh, uh, electricity, the, the, he brings a lot of alegría, a lot of joy in the dressing room and onto the pitch. So I hope that they, Barca will allow him to be comfortable and, uh, and, and, and allow him to you know, adjust and adapt to uh, this new style of play as quickly as possible. So I'm very excited to see him to answer your question in short. Um, Adil saying, uh, what will we do with Griezmann? We already have Suarez maybe in two years. Uh, time we can make Suarez or Larson. That's something I've said, you know, repeatedly. Adil, thank you for bringing that up. I hope that Suarez will stay and will become a a a, a our Larson. Uh, Larson, of course, uh, somebody that. Um, oh, look at that! Uh, bam! I can just eliminate that. Bam! And Larson, somebody who I admired so much. All of us Gules admired so much uh, in the past. And uh, as I'm gonna put here, Suarez equals. Future Larson. I want him to stay. Suarez is comfortable here, uh, as he should be. And, um, you know, I hope that he finishes his career here and then we can bring in somebody, the likes of Griezmann, maybe not Griezmann, maybe somebody else. But, uh, I heard this guy Mbappé is pretty good. <laughs> Jokes, of course. No chance. No chance. But, um, yeah, I, uh, that's what I hope as well. I, I mean, I, I, I don't think Griezmann is a done deal. I know a lot of people do. I don't think so, but we'll see what happens. Uh, on to the last question before I sign off here. I'm on 33 minutes. Uh, Adrian saying, for sure, it feels as if we are studying the first half and trying to read the minds of the opposition. And then, booyah! Absolutely. Um, all right, guys, that is it. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you for submitting uh, your likes, blowing up those thumbs, blowing up those hearts, blowing up the smiley faces, the laughing faces at my silly jokes. Uh, I try to make jokes at times. But uh, thank you for tuning in today. It's been a pleasure. Sorry if I am a little was a little bit all over the place, but I'm trying out this exciting new software where I can share my screen with you. And uh, let me play that intro just one more time because, you know, I spent a little time on that. And the intro, I'll make it my out outro as well. So um, thank you again for, 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 for you know, all your comments as well, your compliments. And uh, we will speak very soon. Midweek action. Barça Español. Copa del Rey. Visca al Barça. Visca Disport. Y visca Barça Blaugranes. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, share with your friends. Because I'm blowing up the spot. Blowing up the spot and all that. All this paper, son.